method. So here, I spend a lot of time in this method. And the width is the number of um, different execution, the number of execution of this method, of, the number of times the method has been called, has been executed. So here, I have a very, I have a method, the right method, I spend a lot of time in this method, and this method has been executed just once. And then the color tells you like the number of different objects on which the method has been involved on. So this method here has been involved on and probably on just one object. And over there, like, I have some methods that are uh, dark and, and quite large square. It means that I spend a lot of time on this method, and this method has been executed many times on many different <coughs> objects. And yeah, so I use this um, this blueprint that has been obtained from running the benchmarks on, on Mondrian. And so Mondrian, this is a tool that you know is pretty things. And I was a bit surprised that this method here bounds. So by moving the mouse above, I have a lot of you know show tooltip information. And here I spend a lot of time on bounds. And I was a bit surprised. So what bound does? It just uh, you can send a message down to a graphical object that just will tell you like the right angle. That will uh, you know, um, circumscribe the, 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 the object inside. And I say, how come this method is so slow? <coughs> I, I, I'm a developer of Mondrian, and I say, no, this, this can't be. Like, I, I can't spend like a, you know, a fair amount of time in, in this method. So now, like, if I move the mouse above this method here, which is the root of the whole, you know, of uh, the computation. If I do right click, I can switch it to a different view, which is called the behavioral profiling blueprint. So here I have the, the method that I just did the uh, right click on. And here I have the graph of all flow. I do not see classes now, I just see methods. And the same thing, so the, the, the shape is the same as before. The height is the uh, execution time, how much time I spend in methods. The width is the number of different executions. So here at the top we have this method that is take a lot of time as in executed just once. And something new that um, something new that, um, that I have against the previous visualization is the color. So the gray color means that the method has written self. And the yellow means that the method is constant on the written value. And per object. Per object receiver. And it means that this gray, so why gray that written cell? It means that this kind of is, is likely that the method does a side effect. You know, if it doesn't return meaningful results other than the receiver itself, it means that probably the method is going to do a side effect. And then if the method is, is, is constant on the written uh, value, it means that, you know, might be interesting to twist some cache in this method. So here like, I see like a bunch of methods that are likely to do a side effect. And a bunch of methods that are likely to be functional. And when I move, move the mouse above this method here, I can find this method bound. And the method bound here in yellow is, is yellow. And the fact that it's yellow is, is quite interesting because even though this method already returned the same result, you know, when executed on the same object. And this method here has been executed like many times. And this is a source called a bound. You know, that just has to shape something and then compute the bounds and and because the method is yellow, then I can simply insert this cache, two lines of code. I can insert like the method the, the variable bounds cache in the class uh, I can augment the, 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 the class graph element with a new variable and then initialize the variable here. At the first execution of bound, then this one will be named, then I will, I will do the compilation, and then I will set the cache with the result. And then a second call, I will just use this, uh, this cache here. And then it turns out that it was quite, quite a good idea. And this is the evolution of the blueprint, of the structural blueprint. <coughs> so here this is the blueprint obtained from the uh, classical um, easy benchmarks. And then by introducing, upgrading like, this bounce method, then I see that a reduction of, of the size of the bounce method here. But something interesting that I, I reduce the, the size of bounds, but then some other methods get darker or their size increase. I mean, the total is 100%, so it's, it's, it's a relative uh, metric. And 
Yeah, so I did something like 43 percent of uh, uh, execution time, which is, I think, quite good. Just means two lines of code. And then I, um, so this is the evolution of the um, behavior blueprint. So here I bounce by introducing the cache and make a bounce, then I, I reduce the size quite a lot. So yeah, I thought that was a kind of code, and, and then I try like, to continue, to continue the analysis. So this is Mondrian, but a different thread. This is the UI thread now. But I, I felt the application was still this low. She went to do some drag and drop or something like this. So this is like the, the two blueprint, the behavior blueprint and the structural blueprint for uh, the UI thread. And then here I see like a lot of, you know, very large uh, yellow methods. So I started to introduce some caches there and there. And then I, I reduced the size. And then I continued because I didn't like quite this uh, references. And then I reached that level where I have almost no large yellow squares. I mean that at, at that stage, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that there is not much opportunities for improvement without changing the architecture and the design of Monday. Any questions before I move to the third profiler? Yeah, so this has been published um, at some conferences, tools, and, and we are currently have a paper on SPE. I have a question. So the, the height represents the amount of time to execute. Yep. Is that the time per call? The time no, the total time. Of all the calls? Yeah, of all the calls. What kind of speed improvement do you see after? Sorry, Alan? What, what kind of improvement did you see after you've done this, pro this profiling? Performance improvement. Yeah. Uh, for the UI thread, I don't know. I, I, I have this figure in the paper, so I can just go on our page and you are going to find the thing. I don't know, but, but yeah, it, it was useful. It was a good shot. Yeah, okay. So, you know, I, I was quite happy with uh, this result, but, but I, I still feel a bit frustrated because underneath, I use message tidy uh, to obtain this, the, the length, the height of the board, you know, how much time I spend in methods, and there is no, you know, I use message tidy to obtain this information. But the real bad thing with message tidy is that if you have two profiles, then I have different things, you know. And, and that was, yeah, the, 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 that was a bit annoying. I mean, it's not the real problem of message tidy, it is the fact that, uh, Program execution something, this is a culprit of, you know, <coughs> the poor performance of, of code profilers. And, yeah, so I won't go into details, but message study and like all, um, all the other profilers, how that works, you execute your program and every millisecond or every five or ten milliseconds, and you just interrupt your program, change the method called stack, and then associate some counters. To, um, that after the execution, you can get some statistical information on how much time you spend in methods. But this is like fairly uh, uh, unreliable and inaccurate. And yeah, uh, and there is another problem with that. That if you have like, you know, I do profile, I go out to get the profile that just yesterday. You know, let's say that I want to profile an application against, you know, a different, so it doesn't make sense. And this is something which is, for me, I find that quite frustrating, especially if I want to record the, the, uh, the performance of Monday over like two years of development. So um, since we are in small talk and everything is an object, everything you know, happens by sending messages, I say, oh, why don't you send messages? And actually, yeah, it works out like pretty well. So what I mean by counting messages, let's say here you have, method, uh, you have a class wallet with a method called increase by one. Increase by one, but just add one to the variable money. And this, uh, by sending like money equal money plus one, I send one, one message, or almost. One message to, to money. Plus one is a message that you send. And here, if I have like wallet increased by three, I call three times this increase by one. If I send like increase by three to wallet, then I have six messages sent. I mean, this is a general idea. This would be more like an info, but this is a general idea. And counting messages works um, pretty well. So I took like uh, 16 applications, and I run the unit test of each of them, and then uh, I, I plotted them. So across is an application. 
horizontally the same time spent to run the unit test. And vertically, this is the amount of messages sent while I'm running the unit test. And then you can see that we have a very nice line. And yeah, so I won't go into details, but here you have a correlation of 0 0.99, which means that there is a very strong correlation. And basically, if you know one, one variable, then you can guess for the other one. Then now, I, uh, this is for complete application. Now I try to look, to do a zoom into, into an application and to see like the method against the time and the number of messages. So now across is the method, and horizontally is the total amount of time spent in the method while I'm running the unit test, and vertically is the amount of messages sent by, by the methods. And again, you can see that there is a very nice line. And so what this, um, this graph says that, um, you know, counting the amount of messages is a very good proxy to approximate the average execution time. So, yeah, and, and, and this has a number of very good properties, such as there is no need of mapping. If I do one profile today, I go and buy a new laptop, I do a new profile again, and I will be able to, to see the difference between these two of them, and I can give a meaning to the difference if they are easily. And also, I'm quite dependent from the execution platform. It means that I can do profile why I'm listening at some interface. You know, I'm, I can listen music without, the, without being afraid of to touch uh, my, me my measurement. And I have also pretty stable measurement. Uh, uh, the stability is not perfect since if you do exactly two runs of, the, of an application, you might not have the same amount of messages sent. This, the, one of the reasons is and the hash values that are provided by the virtual machines is being used uh, in dictionaries and hash tables, and the amount of collision that you may have depends on the hash tables, uh, on the hash value given by the virtual machines. So two runs on the same application on the same piece of code might lead to a different number of uh, message time. But in practice, it's not a problem. This is, the variation you might have is in the average like less than 1%, which is almost nothing against message study. And yeah, so there is a number of things you can do. So one, one of them is that uh, I can write this kind of test, such as uh, this does say that I assert that this adding one element in a set is faster than adding two elements. You know, it's not something you can do like even by using a time now or a millisecond, that it's not something you can do since this operation is so fast. Then, um, yeah. And um, yeah, and this is one of the tests that work for Mondrian. So here I have, I have two visualizations. One visualization that contains n nodes, which is all the subclasses of collections. And here I have the same visualization with one node more, which is collection with this collect the nodes are the collection and all its, its subclasses. And then here I said that it's faster to uh, render this first visualization than the second one. And yeah, so also um, we also study like this um, the profiler stability. So this can become like quite uh, quite common. I won't go into detail. So this has been published at uh, ECOOP. I presented um, this work uh, last month. So everything that is is on paper. And you can just download it from our page. Uh, I did. I have a question about. Uh, you say that uh, more or less a number of. Time a method is called is equivalent to the, the, the time. Uh, no, uh, yeah, so the amount of time spent method is is, uh, is uh, related to the amount of messages sent in application in this method. So, uh, if your application is slow, one way to make it faster is to reduce the amount of message sent in total, and this works. This works when the case for power. Related to the complexity of the method itself. No, this is just amount of message sent. Yeah, so I just have like four minutes left, so I try to speed up a bit. Like four minutes left, right? Okay, and I mean, you know, it works well, but still, I was a bit frustrated because the profiler, like so far, you can just tell me, oh, here you spend thirty percent of the execution times in that method. Yeah, but what can I do against that? And 
I built a, a, a disk profiler, discounting messages approach that I did. Uh, we did, um, uh, I started to build something on top of it that will notify me like what are the redundant compilation. Now, now that I know my application is slow, I know where I'm spending time on, but the profiler maybe can help me like, to notify what are different parts that I can, you know, let me introduce some caches somewhere. Or, like, the traditional code profiler tells you where you spend time and know how you can optimize it. And, yeah, and one solution to that problem is I'm currently working on identifying what are the methods that are side effect free and that I did it more than once. So the cache that I introduce, you know, with this yellow method is the following. So here I have like this MO graph element, absolute bounds, and here I introduce these two lines here. And here I do reset of the cache, you know. When I'm dragging off the node, then so this cache has to be reset to name. But something I would like is to profile that tell me where I should put these lines here. This few amount of lines. Where I should put them, and this is for like for the simplest case, but that it could, could be going to be complex when you have like the method that takes some arguments. So this is a case of Nautilus where uh, I found, yeah. So I found uh, this this package icons for was doing some redundant compilation, it was exhibiting too many times for nothing. So here I introduce a memoization by taking into account. The argument, nothing more. So I create a car, I create a, uh, check if the variable is nil or not. If it's nil, I, I give, I, you know, I put a dictionary, and then here I, I put the value into the, uh, into the dictionary. So this, this, this one, the, the four, this four profiler is very ongoing work, and yeah, so is so a method is a candidate for being wise if it is executed more than once on a particular object. And again, a particular set of arguments. And if you return, if you return the same value per receiver at the argument, and then if it doesn't do any perceptible side effect. So the thing is, if you just say, oh, if a method <laughs> has a side effect, then I cannot use, I can never introduce a cache there, then it won't be that useful because methods do side effect all the time. And, but when I'm interested in identifying a method that does a side effect, but these side effects are not that important. This is what I, I am currently uh, interested in. And also, like, whether the methods, is super, uh, the execution is super, uh, sufficiently long, that is interesting to introduce the cache. So, yeah, so those are the three that identify the methods where I can introduce the cache. So, I did an experiment that took 11 applications, and I run the, pro the unit test for each of them, and then I try to identify this method, candidate for being minimized. Then uh, I identify the method, I memorize the methods, and then I make sure the tests are green, you know, that I'm, I mean, it's not perfect, but this is the only way I have now to make sure that I do not break anything. So those are the uh, 11 applications, and this is the amount of methods that are defined these applications. And in the average, I found like about like 1% of the methods are worth being memorized. And, yeah. So in some cases, like it's quite uh, advantageous in the sense that, you know, in the case of Nautilus, I found a redundant compilation and introduced a cache, and then the, the application was just 20% faster. And in some other cases, the execution time increased. This is the case for very short methods that um, looking at the cache makes the method slower. Actually. Yeah. So the research question I'm currently uh, investigating is. But if there is a general way to notify redundant messages you know, by monitoring the programming diffusion, and more importantly is whether these redundant messages can be removed while preserving the general programming variant. Yeah, so this is like very ongoing work. So if someone is interested, then I can would be glad to discuss this. And <coughs> so to be like what is for oh, right now. So to build all these profilers, um, I I build a framework for it. So SPY, yeah, SPY is a, uh, uh, a profiling framework where here I have the class profiler, I have the class package SPY, which has a set of class SPY and a set of uh, method SPY. And I can create a new profiler by just subcasting these classes. I run the profiler and then I can add some body graph things for each of these classes. So, but, um, 
to follow like, the equation. Uh, actually, it works well, but we don't go below the, uh, the instruction. Uh, we don't go below the methods. So what I would like to have is like IST node here. And this, I have a number of ideas on how to have that. Yeah, so that's on almost uh, reaching the end of the talk. So my impression that there is there's been like a great, um, great deal of work being poured in, in, the, in the, you know, the, system, the system called Browser, and there's been a lot of improvement over the years, but I think that for the code profiler and, and, and also the code debugger, there has been almost no improvement. I mean, we are debugging, programming, understanding the execution of the application the same way we do in Smalltalk than we do in Java and we do in C. Really, we have Code profiler keeps things in terms of the method called stack, which is a very, very poor abstraction to understand what really happens you know, at the execution of objects. And I think we, we, we can do much, much better. And I think that by counting messages, thinking in terms of object, and really opens, you know, give a huge range of new opportunities for improvement. Okay, so this work has been, so uh, these four profilers have been the result of almost two years of research, and so this is not my, my my work only, but uh, so we have to thanks like Vanessa. She has been working on Pao, and then the three guys have been working on this visualization blueprint. That is Philippe Panyados. I hope uh, to, to bring more Latin people at, at next year. So we see. There is Roma, who is professor at the University of Chile, with me. There is nice Walter Binder from the University of Milan. And then also we have to thanks like Laurent Arton and uh, for the interview that we did on us. So that was fun. And there also there is uh, we have to thanks uh, Steph's group. Uh, we spent one wonderful week last week at uh, at Lille. And also, we have to thank some people who participated in our experiments. There is Max, there is Ben, there is thank you for us. Yeah, so thank you very much. Okay. So our next speaker is the other media will speak again. About optimization, but this time we propose a, a solution for optimization. What's wrong? That's right, Manuel? <coughs> what? <laughs> Sorry? You will be discussing a solution for optimization. <laughs> Thank you.